These are liminal spaces, described by Wikipedia as the subject of an internet aesthetic portraying empty or abandoned places that appear eerie, forlorn, familiar, and often surreal. These, on the other hand, are optical illusions, and as my good friend Dr. Glenn Pierce would tell you, they are all based on perspective, like here, where you either see a beautiful young woman or an old hack, or here, where you see what appears to be an impossible shape. The culmination of liminal spaces, optical illusions, and some really clever puzzles gives us this video's subject, Superliminal. So I welcome you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the art of superliminal. The game begins with an intro cutscene that establishes we are a patient at the Pierce Institute, run by Glenn Pierce, undergoing dream therapy that will remedy an undefined ailment. Then it drops us into an intimidating, very bleak, institutional looking room or system of rooms where we get introduced to the basic mechanics of the game and learn you can make objects larger or smaller based on the perspective. After becoming familiar with the basic concepts that will come up throughout the game, we are prompted to solve some pretty basic puzzles that give us a good base to define the skills that will be used throughout our journey. Soon after solving a couple of more puzzles, we come across one of our first mind-bending exploits. This is some sort of room system that is infinite. Every time you walk through a doorway, you come out one on the other side of the hallway, and it just repeats. However, there's not much we can do here, so we just move on, and after a few more puzzles, we find this black hole with a bedroom at the bottom. We fall down it and appear in this bedroom with an alarm going off. This alludes to interesting ideas, because keep in mind, we are in this institute for dream therapy, and dreams often start and end in bedrooms. This is obviously a time when a dream is ending, however, because the alarm clock is going off. Or is it? Maybe it only signifies a time when the dream resets? Regardless, after turning off the alarm clock, we are guided to this reception room, which leads to a hallway. Through this hallway is a hotel hallway that seems to be abandoned. It has a completely different aesthetic than the last level, and gives way to a few more puzzles that require intuition to solve. This section serves as another area to become familiar with the game mechanics and to solve fun puzzles. One that stuck out to me in particular was this one. In this puzzle, you must grab the moon through the open window out of the sky and bring it down to you, back down to Earth. On this moon, there is all manner of items that you can use to further your expedition, and one of them is a massive wedge. This is very clever game design, because earlier in the level we learned that you can climb up wedges to get to high locations. Using this knowledge, we are able to climb our way up and out of the building through the window. It is a unique area that gives the player an idea that they did something. They defied what you were supposed to do to finish the level, which was walking through the door presented by the moon, and they went above and beyond literally and figuratively. After pulling a couple more shenanigans and making our way through the door, we find we have finished this level. This is signified by the recurring elevator we will be repeatedly seeing for the rest of the game. This leads us to our next level that has a few more puzzles we won't dwell on, but also introduces a few new ideas. Like this one, where we find a die that we've been picking up and moving around for the whole game, but this time it comes apart and gives way to an elevator shaft we fall down. This is symbolic of the dream world in the way that we don't know what comes out of dreams, despite how absurd it may seem, and it always feels real in the moment. We don't actually land at the bottom of this elevator shaft, or whatever it was, but instead in a box. Just another example of one of the curveballs Superliminal throws at us constantly. Nevertheless, we finish the level, and this time, still using the elevator, we respawn back in the bedroom with the alarm clock. Note that the time on the clock has advanced from 3 to 5. This shows us that we are in a new dream, and therefore, in video game terms, a new level. This new level is one of my very favorites. 
It has a completely different tone than the other two levels, and introduces some really interesting mechanics. It begins with us walking down this very dark, intimidating hallway, where these pretty scary sounds play, and the lights go out, leaving us only with the red haze of the emergency lights. This outlines a very substantial tone that will carry throughout almost the entire level. Then, pretty soon, we are led to what appears to be some sort of horrifying crime scene. There is blood all over the floor, and bloody hand marks on a door that shuts when we walk up to it. Nothing else in the game so far has given us reason to be worried, but this will likely really set the player on edge. Then, we continue to solve some puzzles that use the darkness to its advantage and we keep seeing these terrifying bloody traces of what seems to be a person fleeing, maybe even dragging a bleeding out body. One thing I also thought was incredibly clever was this diet soda selection. All throughout the game, soda has been reoccurring in, in soda machines. Diet soda has never come out when you press the button on these soda machines, but here, around the corner, we see a box of diet soda, and it's placed just so we see the letters die. This is so genius. It sets us even more on edge, alluding to this crime scene that seems ever so obvious. We continue to solve puzzles in the dark, and continue to see the bloody aftermath of this crime. It keeps subverting our expectations and has a few more really quite ingenious puzzles, like the ones you must solve by using the light from the exit signs to guide your way out. This level wraps up with a staggering amount of blood, just frosting the floor. Then, at the end of this hallway that harbors enough blood to feed a nation, there's this box that says idea. We click it, and I'll let what happens next play out for you to witness. Pillow Castle, the developers of Superliminal, have subverted our expectations yet again. This whole time, we have just been following our particularly messy paint crew, who have just spilled oodles of red paint. This really serves as a great finale to this dark and dreary level. It raises the spirits because no one has actually died, and illuminates the idea, see what I did there, that we are in a dream. Because this is way too insane to happen in the real world. Right? This game raises many philosophical questions and gets you thinking a lot about dreams, what they represent, what they mean, and how they can be interpreted. All these subjects of thought really begin to be brought up after this last level we talked about. We are only a couple of levels into this admittedly pretty large game for the type of experience it is. So in the spirit of not making this video half an hour long, I'm only going to briefly touch on or just take out a few of the last levels for my review. I also want to preface this second half of the video by telling you that I think Subliminal is an incredible experience, and I believe that you should 100% go out and buy it for yourself. Stop watching this video if you haven't already. But with that said and done, let's get back into it. The next two levels of the game are also innovations of the Superliminal formula, as the last level, Blackout, was. The first is called Clone, and the second is called Dollhouse. They both introduce new mechanics reflecting their names, and they both provide really cool moments both in gameplay and atmosphere, which is very important in any game. In the clone level, when you click a clickable item, it duplicates, harboring a sporadic habit to follow your cursor. It created a few really cool sections where out-of-the-box thinking was paramount, and it rewarded you for implementing those eccentric ideas. The dollhouse level is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. It has some really cool atmospheric moments and also just has some fun gameplay systems and challenging puzzles. The level plays around with the player's character's size a lot, which has not been experimented with yet. 
It introduces different buildings or objects that accommodate doorways that can be resized at will for the player to walk through. I feel like a broken record talking about the genius of Superliminal, but these mechanics, once again, highlight the masterful puzzles that in turn highlight the incredible intellect of the developers who created this game. This is the genius of Superliminal. It is like an infinite loop where the phenomenal mechanics of the game just act as the engine for the powerhouse of experience to drive itself. I also figured out this weird jumping mechanic where you can make the object larger under you just offhandedly, which when watching a speedrun, I learned was a speedrun strat, which is pretty cool. I would go watch a speedrun of this game if you're interested. But enough of my ranting. I would also like to mention that in between these two levels, we have a moment of zen where we get introduced to this so-called relaxation room with a beautiful recording of the sky playing on a projector. Similar to the infinite room earlier in the game, it serves as nothing but a spectacle, but it is very cool nonetheless. At this point, we have finished six of nine levels and are the majority of the way through the game. For the next level called Labyrinth, I would tell you it's one of the trippiest levels if the two following it weren't so intoxicating. Regardless, it's definitely the most insane level so far. It begins with the player receiving emergency and error notifications, alerting them to something gone wrong. But then the real fever dream of a level kicks in. We see, on this whiteboard, a message telling us to wake up, after seeing what should be our level transfer elevator be blocked off with bricks. It results in us just waking back up in our room. Weird. Then everything seems to be back to normal, but it's not. We get transported back to our room, yet again, and again, and again. But this final time, there's something different. The room is flipped the wrong way. Uh-oh. We drop into a new location we have not seen before, but has an alarm clock. Upon pushing it, we get sent back to our room. Again. This time, there doesn't seem to be a way out until we recognize a photo on the wall that can be moved. And upon enlarging it, we can make our way through it. Then, once we come out, we find ourselves in this complex we've grown familiar with all throughout the game. Then, all of a sudden, the gravity is completely flipped. Bizarre. Maybe this is connected to the error message we got earlier? But we continue to make our way through this level as best as we can, which is not very good, because the gravity continues to flip-flop around. But we just keep solving these puzzles that feel similar yet apart from all the puzzles in the rest of the game. It really serves as a breaking the third wall moment, subverting our expectations yet again, Pill Castle is really so good at this, and giving us a new perspective to look at all the puzzles in. We experience a crazy moment here, where we drop a large staircase onto the floor and it straight up collapses beneath us. Then, down beneath the rubble, is our elevator. But what can you expect from Superliminal? It does not work. We find, though, that there is an exit to our posterior, and we go through it. On the other side is some strange, infinite system of hallways that you solve in an almost as strange way. You have to go the opposite way the exit sign points you, see that that's the wrong way, and then actually follow the right signs after finding out the wrong path was the correct one all along if that makes any sense whatsoever. It's very genius because it represents what we have been doing all level, as shown by the closed elevators. This marks the beginning of my personal favorite level, White Space. These last two levels are really something special, and despite some of the spoilers I've already thrown out, I highly recommend you going in and experiencing this epic game for yourself. I'm going to take a little bit of a backseat in these last two levels and not unpack as much of the content because there's even more than normal and it's all really cool, but I'm just going to go over some of the highlights of these last two levels. In general, they are both just kind of the culmination of everything you have seen and learned throughout the entire game, but let's begin with white space. This is my favorite level primarily because of a lot of the really cool visuals and optical illusions. We have been seeing optical illusions this entire game, but here, Pillow Castle really takes it up to the next level and provides us with eye candy galore. 
One of the standout sections to me is this mind-bending encounter with a parking lot that is seemingly out in the open. This initially makes you think you may be escaped from the dream therapy center, but if you walk in any direction, and you must try all directions, you find you are surrounded by painted walls, and then your bedroom is in the center. Your bedroom provides a loading screen for you to look at, but then we make it to a completely different type of bedroom, with a model shopping center sitting on a desk. We can pick up one of the buildings and enlarge it enough for us to walk through, and on the other side, we find the room we are already in. You solve this, very interestingly, by walking through the door placed in the bedroom area while holding the building, and the game almost entirely breaks. The world around you seems to turn white, as implied by the name white space, as you look at everything. This drops us into this white space where we solve a few puzzles that play with light and just look at some really cool visuals that I will save you the tedium of going over. In line with the rest of the game, we continue to solve some very intuitive puzzles with a couple of standouts, like this stairway section or the chest section that I thought were awesome but wouldn't like to spoil. Then this level ends with a sort of shock factor. I honestly couldn't explain the reasons exactly why this gameplay occurs here, but it does nonetheless. We walk through a short hallway with intense light features, reminiscent of that one scene in Incredibles 2. But in Superliminal, we don't end by catching the bad guy. Here we drop down a hole and into our alarm clock. The alarm clock has been a very common theme throughout the entire movie and brings itself back in extraordinary fashion to kick off the final level. And now we'd be in level 9. Retrospective. Retrospective is a very special level, particularly for players who have made it throughout the entire game. The opening sequence to this level just takes us backwards through a ton of the levels we have seen, teleporting us after we have maybe 20 seconds to walk around in it. And behind all of these levels, there is no gameplay besides walking around. There's just a monologue from Dr. Glenn Pierce about the obstacles you faced along the way. It really makes the experience feel so special, wrapping it up and putting a bow right on top, just for you to see. Retrospective is the shortest level in the entire experience, and it's not even close. It is still one of my favorites, though. I'm a sucker for nostalgia, and despite the fact that I played this entire game off of two pretty short play sessions, I really enjoyed myself and liked looking back on it. Then. You wake up, and the credits begin to roll. Thank you for making it to the end, to the two people still watching this. I really just made this project for myself, but if you enjoyed it, I'd love to hear your thoughts, constructive criticism, or something else in the comments below. But in conclusion, this has to be one of my favorite games of all time, and it was really just special to me. And I will be making a video, hopefully sometime soon, about my favorite games and what I recommend to you. But, you know, that might not happen. Anyways, have a good day, and I will see you next time.